Right. So um, continuing on, I think from actually matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll not in any particular order, but I want to probably answer this one first, as I know, I think Leah <coughs> did answer this or this uh, did ask this, I should say, and it's to do with um, GDP cycles and really kind of finding out um, if there's a preferred range. And there isn't a range on with when it comes to GDP growth, right? So generally you, you see... Um, See the business is is what's known as the I guess the business cycle, the economic cycle, right? Where this is uh, this is growth, yeah, and this is time. And um, generally, in an economic cycle, you you know I would say you start with, but you have you know boom, contraction, recession, bust or slump, recovery, expansion, and boom again right and that's basically what's supposed to happen although although there are there is a caveat to that is that just because you're in a certain phase or potentially in a certain phase um doesn't mean that you know you can't go backwards right so you can easily go from a recovery the recovery phase um back to uh i guess bust or slump or in fact you know a recession for example Right. And then that could be the loop because ultimately two negative quarters, right, of GDP growth, right, uh, equals a recession, right? Is basically what's known as a recession. So, um, T E C E, right, it's a recession. So you could be recovering, and if the central bank don't manage um, the, the economy, let's say, for example, currently they start hiking interest rates a bit too aggressively, for example, that could send the economy back into a recession. Now, I guess the question is, is, is understanding where we are in an economic cycle. And you, you won't, I mean, you can know by looking at GDP data, right? And what you'll see generally on a, on a on a uh, on a chart of, of GDP growth is you'll tend to see you know something like this, for example, right? Um, where you know if you're in the growth phase, you can you know there are you know quarters where you might get a bit of a pullback, but overall over a period of time, um, generally you're on the up and up, and you'll know whether you're in the recovery expansion phase or even the boom phase. Um, just from looking around you, right? Are there jobs? Are there is there is there low unemployment or high unemployment? Is there high employment or low employment? Um, you know, are people spending money again? People going on holiday again? Or you know what I mean? Like you, then you'll know um, whether the economy is really just you know coming out of maybe the recovery to the expansion phase, and obviously a booming phase would be you know everyone's you know seems to be making money from various different sources, whether it's you know your property, you know landlord or you know stocks and bonds and all that kind of stuff, right? Like that's where you know the economy is generally you know booming. Think about you know don't know how old everyone is, but you'll know you should know the difference really when when things are good or when things aren't good in, in, in an economy, or even if they're not good for you personally, um, just maybe generally um, when, when things are okay, where you don't necessarily have to worry, or people in general aren't worrying about, you know, employment, there's jobs, vacancies, etc. So that, from that perspective, um, you don't necessarily, uh, you, can, you can kind of tie it together. So right now, right now, um, where are we in terms of where are you, Leah, in, in the world? Where are you? Where do you live? London. London. Another <laughs> Londoner. <laughs> yeah. Hi, how you doing? Another Londoner. You're right. So, all right. So, so right now, um, would you say that we are in the recession phase? No. Okay. Would you say that we are somewhere maybe between the recovery and expansion phase? Yes. Yeah, that's and that's exactly it, right? <laughs> you know, what I mean, you can, <laughs> and that, it's, it's it's pretty much that, and you can see it on you know with, when GDP is generally growing, 
right? Yeah, so as yeah. long as we're not in those two, you know, negative quarters, you know, quarter mm. on quarter reading, uh, QOQ, yeah, and, you know, GDP is generally growing, then fine. There, are, there will be periods where, where GDP might be flatlining, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean we're, we're, we're um, you know, going into a recession. It might just mean that, you know, maybe the recovery is taking a bit longer, to potentially go into the expansion phase or not, right? We could go again back into the recession phase. But the point is, we're probably somewhere between here and here. Yeah. And so, and again, also with fundamental analysis, what we're trying to do is not always look at where we keep one eye, obviously, on where we are currently, but also one eye on where we're potentially going because. The market is trying, always wants to price in what future value potentially is, current and future value, right? But you also you always have to have one eye on where future value is or potentially, you know, going to be. So if, for example, you know, in the UK, we um, start to grow, right? Um, and things start to look really good, employment starts to grow, unemployment starts to, you know, go down, then you would particularly, you'd, you'd keep an eye on that, on those metrics, right? And then what you would do is look to potentially buy the pound, right? At the moment, um, the pound and the UK economy, I guess, is what we should be looking at, is, is struggling a bit, right? It's struggling. And um, the Bank of England are, you know, pretty much saying this point that high inflation, which is, you know, the, the cost of uh, living, I guess, um, and, you know, the energy crisis that we're currently going through, and like I said, high inflation um, may tip everybody, well, everybody, but the, the economy back into a recession, right? And the reason why that is, is because, you know, if you drive and you go, you know, to the petrol station, what is it? Last time I looked at it, it was like 167 or something like that near me, um, £1.67 per, per litre. Um, you know, cost of electric has gone up, as you know, and the gas and energy and just food in general, right? So people will have less to spend in the economy, which then has a knock-on effect of, well, if people are spending less because they're more concerned about the cost of living, then if you're a business and let's say, I don't know, you're a, you're a pub or a, or a clove shop, you're a retail shop, wherever, sell electronics, you're going to get less people buying, um, you know, I wouldn't say frivolous goods, but you're going to get people buying less goods, right? In retail, which then has a knock-on effect. If, you know, you're a business and you've got less customers coming on or less customers spending money online, then if you've got less money coming in, then that puts you in a problem, right? Because then you may have to end up cutting staff. And if you're cutting staff, then that adds to unemployment. Then after yeah. unemployment, then, you know what I mean? Then you're heading back yeah, into yeah. a, you know this what I mean? This is economic... the scenario that creates the struggle in businesses. And I think I couldn't get my head around what it is, what is the, what is it that creates the struggling? But you're right, we are working our way towards that as we yeah. speak. Exactly. And it's and with fundamental analysis, it's understanding that and just keeping your eye on those metrics and what we look at. So unemployment, employment, inflation, and just really just reading up on. And I'm not saying that you got to sit there every day and read through like hundreds of articles or anything like that. Generally, I don't. Right. I just try to just focus on the main um, topics again, which is GDP, inflation, interest rates. And then from there, I can see what is coming down the line or what is likely to potentially come down the line. Am I going to be right 100% of the time? No, because things can change. No economist is going to be and no, you know, trade is going to be right 100% of the time. But we always have to go with what is likely. Yeah. And it looks likely. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, this is the smart money talking, right? This is the Bank of England. Um, what's his name? Andrew Bailey, as well as, you know, the other voting members is basically saying that there's going to be potentially tough times ahead, right? So from that perspective, where do we then position ourselves when it comes to trading? So when it comes to trading now, rem remember that we are trading one against the other, right? So it's always like you're looking at, you're comparing a straight fight between, for example, the pound and, for example, the dollar right? Pound dollar. When you're looking at GDP growth, you're seeing, you know, who's the better out of the two, 
right? And we can see this on the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, but, you know, basically the, the, the dollar is ranked one and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the UK, I guess, the, the um, pound is ranked, ranked number three. Now, also as well, this ties into the, um, the uh, currency cycle, right? So we understand also not from an economic cycle perspective, but a currency cycle perspective. Now, we understand that just because something is ranked number three doesn't mean that it's an automatic buy in the same way that just because something is ranked number one doesn't mean it's an automatic buy. We need to understand why something is likely to remain strong or appreciate in the future or why a currency that is currency currently, you know, strong may want to take, you know, uh, maybe devalue or depreciate. And again, that just comes with understanding fundamentals. So for me, I think the pound is on its way down, is, is, is probably going to devalue. Now, I'm not saying that if this is going to be set in stone. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like, right? From just me reading the data, looking at what the analysts are saying, what the Bank of England is saying, you know, what the banks are saying. And, um, and so I think it's currently three. Now, yes, you could argue that the, 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 the Bank of England is still hiking rates, which they are. But after that hike, yeah, so after that hike, what happens? And this is where I guess we could talk about timing comes involved, the timing of where, when you want to get short. So is it prudent to necessarily get short now? Well, that's a judgment call. And if you are, then I would say probably the best thing to do would be to not risk a full position but i think after the bank of england do hi finish hiking rates because it doesn't look like they're going to hike rates again after that because they have to kind of wait and see how a hike in rates has is going to a affect the economy because if they hike rates too much because remember we've got inflation problems which is the cost of living problem but then on top of that if you for example uh have a mortgage or any you know loans um and variable then it's going to hurt you because the cost of repaying those loans or the mortgage is going to go up, right? So then you're going to have even less money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. You're going to have even less money. If you think energy bills and food costs are, are, are skyrocketing, when you hike interest rates and, you know, depending on, you know, your mortgage repayments, that could add an extra couple of hundred pounds on top of that. So then you're definitely not going to, go out and spend money which then the economy suffers if you know it requires you to spend money and it could um end up putting you or the economy in a recession sooner and this is what central banks understand from a very you know from a very elementary level right there's obviously a bit more com you know a lot more um uh, complex complexities to that but ultimately that's what it comes down to that's the bare bones of it so that's why the Bank of England are, um, uh, yeah, hiking interest rates can hurt struggling businesses and create struggling businesses. Exactly. It's like a feedback loop, right? Um, so the, the Bank of England are trying to gauge, and all central banks are trying to gauge where the sweet spot is with interest rates and raising interest rates as, as to what level the economy and people can generally still operate without you know, it hurting people, yeah, you know, um, hurting people's, you know, save, well, say savings, in fact, your savings will go up, but when it comes to things like spending, yeah, so it's a balancing act with being a central bank, it's, you know, one of the toughest jobs in the world to run an economy, right, so these are the things that they have to think about, right, on a very, like I said, in a very kind of basic level, so that's why hiking rates, you're, you, you, I, I guess many of you have seen that situation where, or you've seen headlines where it's like, are we heading into a recession? So what they're saying is, is that because of a hike in interest rates and what they're inferring to, I guess, is basically what I've been saying. If you hike interest rates too much, yeah, yes, inflation may come down, but if inflation comes down, then you know, that's that's brilliant because because central banks have a mandate to get their, you know, the inflation to the 2% target. But in doing that, you may hurt the economy because, you know, whereas before I was paying, you know, maybe a thousand pound on my mortgage. Now I'm paying because interest rates are high, you know, are, are higher up, um, uh, have been hiked. 
Um, maybe I'm paying, you know, 1,000, 200, 300, where all my spare cash that I would have used to save and go on holiday and, you know, and maybe buy a new car and do other things, right? Now is being taken up with mortgage costs. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a balancing act, right? It's a balancing act. That's what it's, this all is with the economy. But generally, but in general, that, you know, answering that question is to, as far as does GDP have a target or preferred range? It doesn't have a preferred range as long as, you know, you're just more looking at the trend and which way it's generally going. And also as well, you know, two negative quarters of GDP growth would equal a recession. <clears throat> so does anyone have any questions on that? <clears throat> 